Welcome to another recycling video where I turn some of my rejected watercolor paintings and turn them into something that I call my pretties. This time around I wanted to give the pretties a holiday flair of course because after all it is the season and since I'm going to turn these pretties into greeting cards I need to prep the card bases. These were bought as a value pack at a big box store and they're quite flimsy. It's just a little bit sturdier than copy paper but not as much so it's definitely not watercolor paper but I can still apply a fine layer by using very little water and that way you minimize the warping effect and this set is by Prima it's their pastel set and of course I'm going to finish everything off with a little bit of splashes of gold and sometimes using a heat tool reduces a little bit of the buckling effect and, but the best method is always to weigh down your paper with something heavy like a thick book and you can let those sit for a while while you enjoy a tea break or you can work on a different card front which I will show you now so this is another rejected painting that I flipped over the back side of watercolor paper is never optimum for a beautiful painting but you can still use them so after I've applied the paint I just trim them down to a little bit smaller than a regular card base which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and so these papers will be trimmed to four inches by five and a quarter and that will give me just about 1 16th of an inch border around when I glue that on top of the card base and that will make the card a little bit sturdier and it will stand on its own if open slightly to be displayed and that leads into the pretties portion of this video which is working on the actual rejected artwork and I've already done videos on how to prep the artwork so I'm not going to repeat that I will link to the videos in the description as well as in the iCard however this time around I want to add a few accents with stencils and I will also link the stencils in the description of the video in the supplies list the tool I'm using is a magic eraser by Mr. Clean, which is a very abrasive sponge. I wet it and remove most of the water. You just want the eraser damp. And then I just rub over the stencil and I'm left with this beautiful subtle accent. I also have used baby wipes in the past but I find that I get the deepest impression with magic eraser and you can get a full eraser and cut it into small pieces because you will have to change uh, rotate the eraser once in a while because once it gets sturdy it just propagates the color into the other areas where you're trying to remove the color to provide a bit of contrast I splashed a few white dots with white ink I sometimes use black ink and of course you can always splash more gold but the contrast is really nice to make my pretties because I've decided to do Christmas ornaments for this video I'm going to be using circle punches because I have quite a few in my arsenal but if you don't have punches you can use scissors you can eyeball the circle shapes like I've done previously with my pretties or you can use anything that is round to use as a template trace around the shape and then use your scissors to cut them However, I'm going to be using my punches because I find it is so satisfying punching into that beautiful colored paper and by using the punch upside down I can actually see the design that I'm punching through which is really fun. One of the best templates for circles I found is a roll of washi tape. It is great because you can trace two different sizes of circles with just one tool and then you just use your scissors to cut around the shapes. And I actually enjoy cutting and I do prefer the look of a handmade cut. I think it looks more authentic, more DIY, and it brings me back memories to my first pretties. Once you have all your shapes cut, you just play around with the position of them. I'm going to be playing with five different shapes, a large one, two mediums, and two small. And then before I glue them down, I'm using a gold paint pen to go around the edges. It just makes it a little bit more finished and it just adds a beautiful sparkly accent around the ornaments. Once the contour is dry, I will reposition all these ornaments and use a lead pencil to trace the strings and this will get erased so I'm not too worried about having it straight it's just for positioning then using a ruler and a marker I draw over the pencil marks and I just make the lines a little bit longer so I don't see the ends of the string once I reposition the ornaments and then I just draw little bows on four of them the big one will get a special treatment then I can erase the pencil lines with a kneaded eraser. 
I find this works best. It doesn't scuff up at the paper. And here is where I need to apologize. I'm so sorry. I did not film with my overhead setup. Luckily, I was recording some B-rolls with the iPhone next to me, so this is what you're seeing. And I'm just adhering the Christmas ornaments in two different ways. So some of them were glued with a glue stick. I also use a two-way adhesive. I do not recommend using a wet glue because it's going to buckle your paper even more. And the main ornaments, I added some foam adhesive underneath so that they are raised and so it makes for a nice 3D effect. I also used a white gel pen to add some accents to the main ornament. And if you notice as well, I have some gold accents around the actual ornament. I've also added some curly strings and the bow over the ornament with a gold gel pen. Unfortunately, you can't really see that. I can. I do apologize. Next for the quote, I first wrote it with a pencil and then I'm going to go over it with a black marker. And when I do this, I put all the chances on my side because I'm famous for having accidents happen on my desk. There is a lot of water jars around me, so I always use a permanent marker because this is one of those steps that you don't want to repeat once you get it right. It's it's such a, a success <laughs> that you don't want any accidents to happen. Once everything is done, I can then erase the pencil lines. And this is another reason why I'm using permanent ink is because when I erase, it's not going to get smudged. The last step is to use a little bit of stickles to the background. And of course, when you do this, please make sure that this is the last step. Otherwise, if you have to write something in the background and you've got stickles in the way, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I know this from experience. And here are all the cards that I made with the Christmas ornament theme. I think they're super cute, super pretty, very, very sparkly. But I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to have other options of shapes. So keeping with the holidays theme, I came up with a tree, a series of other types of trees. They <laughs> kind of look like Hershey's Kisses some Christmas stockings and a star. I first drew them in my sketchbook and then on copy paper I reproduced them but just slightly bigger. And I inked over those trace lines and scanned the whole page so that I can have a template for cutting. These drawings are super basic but I thought some of you might be interested in using those as your templates for Christmas cards. And I have saved all these shapes in a PDF file which is available for download. The link is in the description below. That link will direct you to my Patreon page and you do not have to be a patron to be able to download the PDF file. It is a public post. You just have to click on the attachment to download the template. The reason is that at the moment I no longer have a blog and I'm in the middle of implementing a website. So Patreon is right now the only platform where I can actually share files with all of you. The next part might not interest everyone, but I thought I should leave that in in case some of you are wanting to know how I actually converted the sketches into a PDF file. And for this, I used the Procreate app on my iPad. I took a photo of my sketches on my phone and then I airdropped it to my iPad. And then I can go over the sketch with the Apple Pencil. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to separate some of the parts on the stockings. If you notice that there's something at the heel and something at the toe and the top. I wanted these to be separate parts and so with Procreate I can actually draw them on a different layer. Then I airdrop them back to my Mac with the other layers hidden so that they import as a single file. And then with Photoshop I just put all of these files together and save them as a document for you to download. And again the link will be in the description below. And of course I had to use my own document so I made several cards with these shapes. I do suggest that if you are going to use this template sheet you can trace it onto cardstock. It'll make it much easier to trace around the shapes once they are cut. Of course I did not follow my own advice and I struggled to go around the shape of this tree but I'm determined and I made it work. And now I have a pretty stack of holiday cards that I can send to my family and friends. Of course, I have several more to do, but I'm gonna have so much fun doing that. And plus, I think it's a great way to recycle. And of course, this technique could be applied to maybe remnants of patterned paper, something you've done in a journal that you're not entirely happy with, or even old textbook paper. Anything that is paper will do the trick. 
So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope it has inspired you to create your own pretties. I thank you so much for watching. I want to say a big shout out to my awesome patrons who are supporting my art over at Patreon. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do free content here on YouTube for you all. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the PDF file that you can download. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon.